What's happening guys? JD at JD's Custom Buggies. I believe this is video number three, maybe. But if it's not, it'll be four. So last time, I guess where we were at was we had the front end done. And as you can see, we got a little bit more done than that now. So made a couple of changes and where we're at right now is basically our controls are done. We got our pedal set. We got our steering set. She actually works, which is kind of nice. Um, then we have some of the chassis. We redid the chassis. I I had two bars. We'll we'll go through everything. So one step at a time. Um, let's start with the functional stuff. So as of right now, we had to cut all the pedals and stuff out of here. So what we kind of did here is made a, I guess you can call it kind of like a pedal board. If you play guitar, you'll know what I mean. Um, so we dug some, I had some pedals. These are not the pedals that came with the machine. Um, they actually are off probably a hammerhead or a trail master. So made our own tabs here, put the springs in so they work and everything and bounce back the way they're supposed to bounce back. And we have this metric measured, this tube, whatever it is, I took a measurement on that and I put it in a bridge port and just kind of carved it out. Um, so this way, when she's ready to go in, it's all centered up. It's basically going to go in like that. I'm going to weld her in and that's done. So um, usually on other buggies, like if we center seated it or whatnot, we would just cut all the tabs, which was painstaking. And... Um, kind of space them where we wanted to, re-weld them in, big pain in the butt. Um, so just instead of hacking another frame out in a boneyard and getting these little tabs, just figured we'd make our own tabs. So that's where we're at now. We still have to make, um, what's left with this is we got to make a uh, master cylinder mount for our uh, little plungers to work on. So that'll be the next one that. And then once that is all set and done, it's ready to be welded in, and um, we'll just slap a throttle rod kit on here because it's going to have a Makuni. So, um, next we move to the steering, and um, we got a little quick release happening. Um, and this was out of necessity. I had no way, all, all this stuff is fabricated here, so I had no way of mounting a steering wheel on here. Um, I could have probably hacked the uh, part of the... Um, part of a steer shaft off of something else, but I wanted it as, as perfectly straight as possible. I ended up ordering this. I've had this probably sitting in my shop for, um, mm, what are we in 2023, 10 years now. Uh, I was building Lucifer and uh, had every intention, hence why it's purple, uh, every intention of uh, putting a quick release on Lucifer and never got around to it. So fortunately I found this and then I, I carry some spacers in here, so for the six bolt wheels or six bolt wheels. So, um, fortunately, I had this quick release. Otherwise, we would have been kind of hacking away or trying to come up with something or ordering something to mount the steering wheel on the end of the shaft. Um, so every once in a while, it, it's good to keep the junk that you have laying around the shop and save it. So where we're at with the steering wheel, what's really nice about it is it turns like butter. So, basically I have a U-joint at the bottom here so I can get the angle set. Um, this is going to be a slip sleeve, so when you got to take it out, you just basically yank this up into here. Um, I've had this on other builds before, I think the 321, the 45, but basically I like to put a heim joint here for support. Now, it's really not supporting anything, but what it is keeping it from doing and why I feel better putting it in there than not having it in there is... The last thing I want to do, if this was a straight shaft and we're just going up to this pillow block here, um, other than these two itty bitty set screws that are in this bearing, there would really be nothing, you know, if these came loose, there'd be nothing for, you know, basically from him yanking the wheel straight back, um, you know, out of the slip here. So... The heim joint basically, and why I have the two bolts in there is basically so the, the shaft can't move forward or backwards, all right? So um, it really is not doing anything 
except being a stop for the steering, uh, steering shaft and keeping it from going forward or backward. And that's why I put the Heim joint in there. It, it does add a little, you know, if you're pulling down on it, it is, um, does keep everything from flexing. But the main purpose of this Heim joint here is just basically to keep everything from going forward or backward. So there's a lot of finish welding that needs to be done. So we um, made this kind of steering column thing. Um, bent that out, then these two tubes here basically to keep that from, from coming down or, or uh, you know, flexing or whatnot. I hate it when, you know, I don't want to be able to, this should be one of the strongest points of, of the buggy right here because you got the driver in there and, and you're turning left and right, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's the thing I grab onto the hardest, especially if I see something coming, if I'm going to hit somebody or, or, you know, something bad is going to happen, you, you tend to clutch the steering wheel. And I want this to be basically flex-free um, from any stress from the driver because all every bit of his muscle, you're strapped in a seat, you can only, you know, you hit the pedals, but you're grabbing onto the wheel every once in a while. So if that happens, if I can eliminate any flex um, when you're grabbing on a steering wheel, that's good. That should be as solid as, solid as anything else on the buggy. Um, this piece of flat stock here is just here to hold the heim joint. So if I didn't need the heim joint or didn't feel it was necessary, then I wouldn't need this. You know, this is just basically for this to bolt onto. Um, and the other thing that I'm thinking is that if all this has to come apart, I want it to be easy. So um, I believe on a 45, I actually put a, a bung in the uh, in the flat stock. The reason why I chose to do two nuts is because this would be a real pain to adjust. And then, you know, as far as putting the shaft together, there's really no telling of how high this needs to be. And you'd be sitting there adjusting, taking the shaft back out, adjust a little more, put it back in, put it back out. And, and I just wanted it to be able to put it on the shaft, stick it up through the hole, tighten the two jam nuts on there and, and just, you know, make it easier. Um, Pillow block does too, have two set screws, so that's going to be a little added benefit. But even without the set screws being set, this shaft can't move once these bolts are tight. And that's why these um, two bolts are here. So you can basically split the shaft apart to get this all apart if you need to. Um, the other thing is, for any reason, you know, I'm always thinking maintenance and this and that and the other thing. If something wrecks. But if any of this needs to be refabricated, it, it's done in pieces. So it's very easy to refabricate if, if ever need to be. I don't see any of this really needing it but that's that so um originally probably in the last video you'll notice i had just a piece going from up here to down here and, and that basically was when i cut all the side off of the frame i needed something to hold this frame from flexing or, or coming apart um i wasn't sure if i was going to keep that if that was going to be a look but i didn't like the high door on there i just figured it'd be a pain to crawl in and out of here because by the time i get the cage on here um, you need a little bit of a window. So, um, what I did was uh, welded this in place, and then we cut the other piece out. So, at least it was still being held together. Um, it didn't go boing on me or anything like that, so that worked out. And then once that this lower piece was in place, I started really looking at it and, and seeing, A, how I want to make it look and how I want to tie everything together. So... Um, I tied another one under it. I'm trying to triangulate a little bit here. And then I tied another one to this corner. And basically, depending on the angles, what you don't want are, are when you're building a roll cage is, I tend to try and stay away from um, perpendicular bars. So anything that's T-shaped. So I want everything kind of hitting everything else at an angle. Um, the reason for that is, is, is an any, any kind of impact or any stress or whatnot, if you have a perpendicular, um, you know, shape in your cage or whatnot, it's going to tend to push and basically bend things. So at an angle, if everything's at an angle, it, it tends to be a lot stronger and, and more structural. Um, so actually we had Justin, the owner of the buggy, he actually met us here this morning. He sat there. I took some measurements, and that's how we ended up with the positioning of the wheels. We said we were going to do that the last time in the last video. So he did come in, um, got him to sit in the seat. Um, he preferred – he's he's not a super tall guy. He's shorter than me. I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember for the same height, so I didn't know if I could just get in here and wing it. But it's a good thing he came in. Um, we did um, drill an additional set of holes for the seat. 
and uh, ended up that he liked the seat all the way back um, where the pedals were, were perfect. His knees weren't super bent, which is good. He didn't feel cramped and then he basically held the steering wheel where it was comfortable. I took measurements off the floor, took measurements off the existing part of the buggy over here and came up with, okay, the center of the steering wheel need to be 12 inches from this bar, 22 inches up at the center of the steering wheel. And that's basically where we're at right now. So this should be fairly comfortable for him. Um, while we were waiting for him to come in this morning, I was like, okay, what can I do next? Because I really couldn't do any of this yet. Um, so I started with this rear hoop here, which is basically going to get mounted to his gas tank and be incorporated into the cage. And I was actually, when he walked in, I was actually cutting this uh, piece of tube in here to get this main hoop bent. Um, so he hasn't seen this. He's, he's seen this part, and he hasn't seen any of this um, Kate, or, you know, part of the tub here that's, that's basically, you know, holding the steering wheel stuff up. So this will all be news to him. Um, all basically he sat in here as the empty tub with the seat holding the steering wheel with, you know, with nothing. So really pleased with the progress. Um, we were in Tennessee last week, so, um, it took me probably a day or two to recover and then Halloween was this week. So, um, I didn't, I didn't really stay late the first two days. I did show up, pack order, ship them, um. And really didn't get moving on this project till probably Thursday. So between Thursday and we're talking on Saturday afternoon now. So between Thursday and Saturday from the last video is basically the, the progress that you see here is in two afternoons and, and today. So I'm really excited because this is moving um, really well. Um, today was a good flowing day. Um, things just kind of kind of came naturally which is nice there's you know nothing forcing it and I, I'm really happy with it you know the way it's turning out so far looks wise I know probably in the first or second video I was saying you know part of the I wasn't finding an inspiration with the tub that I had to work with but now that it's now that I've got you know ideas in my head and they're just clicking off and this is the part I enjoy about the build the most um, usually the beginning of the build is tough you know, the stripping down of the tub and this and that, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. The, 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 you know, once things start flowing and the front end gets done, I get over that hump and, and get the steering all done, which is really nice. Um, the rest of it, you know, there's that part that flows and then there's the, the detail part, um, you know, doing all the finishing. The finishing could be tedious, but at least there's enough motivation there to keep going on that part of it just because you know, the project could be coming to a close soon. So right now, as far as what we have left tomorrow, I'm going to get this on the floor. We're going to strip the front end off of it, finish welding all the front end pieces. Um, the tie rods are just still tacked. The arms are pretty much done. Just need a little cleaning up. The spindles, um, again, 90% done. Just need a little cleaning up. And at that point, they can go pretty much after the tie rods get welded up. All that can go for paint. So strip all this away get it on the floor, I'll level it on the floor, make sure everything's level so I can do the rest of the cage. Um, doing the cage up here is just a little bit too much up and down and whatnot, and it's just easier um, to have the roof of the buggy about this level when you're, when you're looking at it and welding it than to have it up on the table. So right now, she's done being on the table. Um, there's really not much left to do on the cage. Um, probably a hoop for the roof, some down tubes, um, then aesthetically from there, depending on what it needs, um, you know, there's that balance of what works, what's functional and, and, and then the other balance is, all right, what well, makes it look cool. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Um, you know, we all look, we all like looking at our buggies cause they look cool. So I try to make them look as cool as I can. Um, other wrap ups we got, oh yeah, we didn't even get to that part. So swing arms done. We threw a coat of paint on it, uh, so she's drying now. <clears throat> what this is is basically a Trailmaster swing arm. We cut off the studs for the um, for the uh, dog bones, and what I did is basically made a, a you know no, a dog boneless link um, swing arm. You know, just a solid swing arm. So the um, it mounts the same as it did on the Trailmaster. So you got the two bushings, the bolts that go through there, and then there's a plate here that basically bolts to the front of this, um, which is your bottom half of your swing arm. Now, we cut off the bushings. I'm using heim joints. Two reasons why is heim joints are easier to replace than the bushings, for one. They seem to be tougher and hold up better. And um, 
The other nice thing, so they're easily replaceable, but the other nice thing is it gives it a little length and a swing arm. So the shock, you know, it'll help my shock angle better and help the buggy handle overall better, you know, the rear end of it better. So the shorter the swing arm I find, the rougher the ride. Um, and what I don't want to do is put longer shocks in there and move the shock mount back towards the axle because that's going to tend to give it a little bit more of a ride. I want there to be some space between my axle point and these generally stock are located in a pretty good spot, but I don't want to move my um, my shock mount close to my axle because I want that leverage. The closer it is up front, the more leverage, the better the shock's going to work. Um, so my two options are, and I'll know when I size it all up as far as working on the rear shock mounts, is either I'm going to move, um, leave that where it's at and, and see what kind of angle the shock is at as it hits the frame and then work on it from there. If it lays down too much to shock, then I will probably bump up my bottom mount a little further. Um, I'm probably gonna have to widen it regardless. So I did get a little um, ahead of myself painting this now. What's gonna happen is I'll probably have to widen it for like if I find another Polar set of the Polaris Predator shocks, um, the, the mount's gonna need to be wider. So I'm gonna cut the outside mount and then widen it on the outside of the, the uh, frame of the swing arm there to, to accommodate the shock. So I got a little ahead of myself painting it, but it is what it is. Um, you know, do a little scrub and weld and repaint, not a big deal. So really happy. I think it's got a really great look to it. Um, it's really coming along and it looks tough. It looks really tough. So I, I'm feeling really good about the project so far. I feel really good because it's moving along. I'm hoping to have this done sometime mid-November, like really close to being on the ground. I'm thinking by next week, if everything goes smooth by next week, she'll probably be a roller on the ground. And then from there, it's just wiring motor. And uh, which is basically, that's gonna be the, the easy parts right there. So um, that's it for now. Uh, I think we covered all the bases on this one. So um, if you, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any uh, comments, leave them in the comment section. Hit the like button if you could. And um, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. If you're into GY6 buggies, this might be the page, you know, the, uh, the channel for you. Uh, if you need parts, go to gotbuggies.com. So we stock as many parts as we can and, uh, you know, for everybody's needs. And, and we have some stuff that we do that's unique to us. So that's it, guys. Until um, the next one, JD's out.